In this course, we'll be learning how to design and write computer programs. Before we begin, it's helpful to look at what a computer program is and what compute is all about. Now, there are several ways to define computing and programming, but one of the most general and useful is this one. A program consumes input and produces output. The inputs and outputs that a program consumes and produces are called data. And this is true for all computer programs that you use. Here we'll, we'll take a look at a few programs that you are familiar with and see what they consume and produce. For example, a program like TurboTax consumes information about your income, your salary, your deductions, anything like that, and it produces your tax liability, how much you owe or what sort of refund you're going to get. A program like an antivirus program consumes the disk drive or a folder or directory on your disk drive and produces a list of viruses that are on the disk or in the folder. And more complex programs like video games consume inputs like your triggers, your buttons and key presses, or your gamepad, and produces new positions for the objects on the screen. For example, if you're playing a Mario game, you move your stick to the right, then it produces a new position for Mario, and when the screen redraws, you see Mario in his new position. And in a web browser, it consumes the web address, like www.google.com or www.yahoo.com, and it produces a rendered web page. That is a web page with all of the pictures and the text and the input forms that make a web page what you actually see and work with. And in addition to these common programs, there are some things that we might not think of as programs, but are worth thinking about anyway. For instance, consider something like beans. Beans aren't what we usually think of as a program, but they fit into this model of a consumer and a producer. For instance, beans consume water and nutrients, and they produce beans. So that makes it a simple kind of computer. Similarly, you might think of a bubblegum machine. It consumes coins and produces bubblegum. Or a toaster. It consumes bread and produces toast. Now you might think these are strange, it's strange to think of these things as programs, but it's worth thinking about them that way because, for one thing, we might have to write computer programs that simulate the action of one of these things. We might be called upon to write a computer program that simulates a bubblegum machine or another kind of vending machine. And also, more and more, appliances and other objects are, have computers built into them. For instance, it's not unreasonable to believe that some fancy toaster might have a little computer chip in it that um, will adjust for the type of bread you've put into the toaster and how toasty you want the bread and produce um, different types of toast depending on your settings. So in a very real way, you might make a program that, that consumes bread and produces toast. So that expands our idea of what a computer program is and that's helpful in freeing our mind to think more creatively about the types of programs we write. We'll take a look at a simple program to see how it works in more detail. And here's a simple addition program. And addition consumes numbers and produces their sum. And just as in mathematics, the program or function is called an operator, and the inputs are called operands. In this example, the plus is our operator, and the 3, 4, and 5 are operands. And the group of an operator and an operands together is called an expression, and the output is called the value of the expression. So in this example, we have 3 plus 4 plus 5 is the expression, and 12 is the value of that expression. In the next lecture, we'll take a closer look at expressions and how we write them in actual computer programs.